How many times have you heard someone say, Hey, are those solar panels you got up there? Or, I see you've got panels up there. How many watts do you have? Or, man, that must be nice not to have utility bill. I wish I can get rid of mine. So off-grid systems and solar energy is definitely a hot topic on the road right now. But the question really comes down to how free is off-grid energy. So if I asked you to tell me how much you think it costs to say turn on a light switch or maybe turn on your stereo or maybe even just plug it in your computer. Many of you might say the answer is zero but you might actually be farther from the truth than you actually think and in today's video I want to discuss the actual cost of off-grid systems versus maybe living in a traditional house and how you might be able to find the best fit for your lifestyle. is actually build a couple different models of types of off-grid systems that may work for you and break it down into a cost per day across the course of one year. Now, I want to say a couple disclaimers here because disclaimers are great and disclaimers are kind of set in the baseline so we can all be on the same playing field when discussing this topic. Disclaimer number one is that everything's going to be averaged on one year. So if you're planning on living in your vehicle or domicile or whatever you plan on living in for more than one year, change the math. Disclaimer number two, all of the facts and averages that are simply from Google searches that I so inquisitively typed in, they're based on 2017 and 2018 studies, so if they're wrong, they're wrong. I mean, I, I can't help you, it's just Google. And disclaimer number three is that all of these materials and parts and systems are simply just the costs of the product. So if you're planning on paying someone to install this stuff for you, you're gonna have to add that in to the overall cost of your system and average that into your cost per day. Also, I'd like to just mention that every product that we discuss in this video, I will link in the description below. So if you're interested in actually finding out what we're actually talking about and look at the parts yourself, I linked them all down there so you can go check that out at the end of the video. But with all that said, let's hop into our first system, which is a generic, basic solar system. So the solar system that I created is gonna be fairly generic and it's modeled pretty close to what I have on this school bus. It's not too large, not too small, and I find that it's gonna give us a pretty good number to average across our cost per day. So the system that I designed, we're gonna be listing right here, is gonna be four 100 watt solar panels, four 100 amp hour batteries, a 30 amp charge controller, 3000 watt inverter, 30 amp transfer switch, a 55 amp battery charger, and all the different wires and connectors and components that are gonna be needed to actually create the system. And if we add up all of those different totals, we're gonna to end up with a total of $2,428.48. And if we take that number and divide it by 365 to give us our cost per day, this system over the cost of a year is gonna cost us $6.65. Now we're going to take that number and we're going to save it for later, so don't forget it, and we'll come back to it after we go through our different options. So the second option that we're going to talk about is simply just using a generator. So this isn't going to really be a long-term battery off-grid system. It is going to be when the generator's on, you're powered. When the generator's off, you're not. This can be a really easy way for people to get an off-grid system going and hit the road or live off-grid faster. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use three popular generators on the market, the Honda, the Generac, and the Yamaha 2000 series, and all of them are going to be priced between $650 and $1,000. Now to just kind of hit the average, we're gonna grab the Yamaha as our example, which is priced at $864, just to kind of give ourselves a baseline. Now on top of the generator, we also have to get all of our wires and connectors and different types of plugs to make the system actually work, which tend to cost around $300. So we're gonna have a total cost into this system at $1,164. And if we take that number and we divide it by 365, we're gonna end up with a daily cost of $3.08. Now, this number is a little deceptive because we're running a generator, which means we also need to fill it with gas. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we're gonna use a gallon a day. And the reason why we're gonna say that is because all of these generators use about a gallon every seven to 11 hours. If I've ever used a generator, it's really about a gallon a day, so I find this to be a pretty good baseline. But the US average for gas as of today when I'm making this video is $2.50. Now, $2.50 plus our 308 is gonna give us a grand total of $5.58 per day to develop a generator-based system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this number, once again, save it for later and compare it towards the end of the video. 
The third option, which honestly I don't do really ever, and uh, when you look at the pricing, it really doesn't make sense in the long run, but that is campgrounds. So if you're staying in single night campgrounds, the US average for campgrounds is about $35 to $45 a night. Now, if we look at that, that's also our cost per day, so we don't really have to do much math to get our grand total, which is $35 to $45 a night, far exceeding the other two previous options that we just looked at. Now the last thing that I want to look at is just a really good baseline, which is the average US household cost per month on what they're actually spending on power. And according to a US census, the average cost is around $110 to $111. So if we take that number and we divide it by 30, we're gonna end up with an average cost of $3.66. So this means that most of you out there who might still be in a traditional house or renting an apartment are probably spending around $3.66 per day on your actual electricity bill. Now we take all of our numbers and we put them all back up on the screen and look at them. We can see that the actual cheapest option is probably what you're doing currently, which is living in a traditional house or renting an apartment. At $3.66 a day, that is by far the cheapest option in terms of utilities per day. But you're not watching this video and I'm not creating this video to encourage everyone to just go live in a traditional house. If you're looking to live off grid, we want to look at what our options are here. The whole point of this video is that off-grid or solar energy or wind energy is not free energy. It's just energy that you paid up when you first designed and built the system, and then you have to look at how much that is costing you over time and how long you're using it, and also including with the depreciation of maybe replacing parts or changing things in the future. So now that we have all these numbers and figures and daily amounts, we need to figure out how to kind of take it and put it into some type of information that is useful for us moving forward. Now, there are three main things that I would like to discuss with using these numbers to kind of figure out what might be best for you. The first question that I always like to ask is what type of lifestyle you're planning on living and how long that is. Now, if you're looking to live off-grid, boondocking, never see the face of people for weeks on end, then a solar off-grid system being 100% sustainable might be the right investment for you. Whereas if you're telling me that you just want to do weekend trips and you're planning on just going out with the family, it doesn't really make much sense to do crazy off-grid systems. I know I can give you an example about my lifestyle and what I ended up spending. My solar system on my school bus was about $3,200 and I put about $300 in upgrades over the last few years. Now I've been living in my school bus for three and a half years, which is about 1,277 days. So if I actually take that number and divide my 3,500 by 1,277 days, I end up with a daily average of $2.74. Now that's a pretty good daily average and it has definitely worked out in my favor and my system has definitely paid me back in time. But that would be very different if I spent that amount of money and only actually lived in the thing for six months. So it's something to think about when you're planning out your system and your costs for how do you plan on living, what's gonna benefit you best, and how long you plan on doing this. The second thing that's going to affect you a lot is the cost. So what is the entry cost to building one of these systems or building any of the systems we discussed? And how is that going to affect your ability to get on the road quicker and more effectively? So if you're someone who doesn't want to spend about three, four, or five thousand dollars on a solar system, my best suggestion to you is build a system that can grow. So maybe you do start with a generator and you plug it into a transfer switch and that transfer switch goes into a 120 distribution panel. But by putting the transfer switch in, you later have the ability to plug in an inverter, to go plug in a battery charger, and start growing the system from there. Or vice versa, you can start with maybe just a few solar panels and two batteries, but build the system to upgrades so where maybe you're going to add four solar panels in the future and upgrade to four batteries. So you don't always have to spend it all out front. You can start small and then build it up as you learn your lifestyle as you go. So the third thing is simply the point of this video. It's not to scare you away from putting a solar system in. It's not to tell you that the best way to do this is to run a generator. It is simply just to educate and share the numbers that I've seen over the last few years to maybe inform you into building the best system for you and to fit your lifestyle the most effectively. So I hope that these examples have helped you kind of think through what the average costs of different types of systems are going to be for you when you're designing your off-grid system for your cabin, tiny house, van, or school bus. Now, if you're interested in any of these products, once again, they are linked below, so you can go through them and see what I've put there. All of the products that I've linked, I do suggest, and I've installed personally, so if you're interested in kind of designing a small system, feel free to build off what I've already put there. So with all solar systems, we all wanna live a fun off-grid lifestyle, and I hope that you find the best way that suits you. And with that said, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, remember to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe to this channel if you want more information. Besides that, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. 
Why did I choose a freaking video with so many numbers? Filming on a bus, they said. It would be fun, they said, as we wait for the rain to stop. Waiting for the rain. Waiting for the rain. I'm totally giving up here, by the way. Too many numbers. I can't handle it anymore. I probably said the numbers wrong like three times. This video was supposed to take like an hour to film. It's been way longer than an hour.